Shalom and Bruchim Babayim. My name is Rabbi Itzhak Shapira and I'm the founder of Aavat Ami Ministries. If you are not aware of our ministry, we are an organization that is focused on God's greatest agenda. To bring a Jew from the four corners of the earth back home to the household, the spiritual household of Israel. First to the Jew and first to the nations. And I have with me today somebody that is a little bit of a Jew and is a little bit of a nation because he's a mixture of some sort. And this particular group that is a mixture of some sort have a specific name. You might have heard the term Anusim before, okay? And we have just finished a phenomenal uh, conference in Italy, our second time that we're doing it. And I sense this, this time that there's even more, more acceptance and more zeal to learn about the Anusim and the restoration of the Anusim uh, back to Israel. So I'm here with uh, Yohanan Melech. Shalom, Yohanan. Shalom. Shalom. And, and, and Yohanan, what I'm suggesting here that there are Jews that not necessarily know that they are Jewish, Correct. but they are really Jewish. Absolutely. And first of all, yes. before we even talk about it, the Bible has a lot to Let's say about, say. about yes. this. The rabbis of Israel have a lot to say about this as well. But before we even talk about this in terms of prophetic eyes, please tell us. Who are you? Who are the Anusim? Are you a Jew? Are you a Gentile? What are you? Where you guys came from? Tell us who are the Anusim. Shalom to everybody. Generally, there is uh, three names. One is Anusim. Israeli call this group Anusim. Another one is Maranus, the people persecuted in Spain. But the Bible called this group Maranos and Osim with a special name, ah. the remnant of Jacob. Sheerit Yaakov in Hebrew, and, and can you tell us where is it, where this, this term actually is mentioned in the Bible? So in the Bible we have in Prophet Micah chapter 5 uh, verse 6, and what the remnant of Jacob mixed among the nations. So if we want to know more about Anosim, we need to find all the passages where talk about the remnant of Jacob mixed among the nations. And Isaiah talk a lot in chapter uh, 63 uh, about this group uh, is called the dove, the pigeons who come back to Jerusalem, who come back. We are in Isaiah uh, 61 and uh, 60, 61. But uh, it's, it's important the biblical identification, otherwise we are just talking about the history of this uh, group. So, so in essence what we're saying here that in the last days the scriptures tell us, uh, Yohanan, that, that the Messiah will reveal really who is Israel and he will gather back Israel to him. In, in, in essence, it says that. So, so, yes. so now we are seeing, I saw it here in the conference, a great awakening among people who had a true um, biological connection mm -hmm. or perhaps connection to uh, a custom they have done in their from great parents or whatever. Uh, they have some sort of a strange connection to a custom perhaps that was done by the Jewish people, okay? Yeah. So, so how did they, how did they get lost? Those, those Anusim. What, what is they? Can you briefly explain to us uh, what's the history behind the Anusim? Well, make very briefly. Uh, in the 1492, there was the decree of Granada, the expulsion from the major group of Jewish in Spain. Uh, this, uh, the Jewish was forced by the Catholics, uh, Queen okay. and King Isabella Fernando to move. But it's important, according to the Bible, we have a different two groups of Israel. What the person I call the evident Israel and the hidden Israel. Evident Israel, visible Israel, let's say in this way, 
is the Jews we today still we have in Israel we have them in in the synagogue or probably they are secular Jews but they but they are Jews they, who live in the diaspora live in the diaspora but they are visible in some way they are they not are Jews persecuted by the anti-semitism yes but uh, there is another group uh, say uh, the prophet Micaiah is the remnant of Jacob who is mixed so I call this group invisible Jews okay, okay. So the question that I want, uh, uh, I give one example, sorry. It's uh, just one very well-known name. I just want to show the last book okay. published in Israel. This book is published in English and in Hebrew. And the titles of this book is the book of a prophecy of a Christopher Columbus. So we know at the school he was the great man who crossed the ocean. Okay. There is much more. In this book is right that Christopher for seven years was studying the scripture about the remnant of Israel among the, among the Gentiles first. The second, he was looking, we have some original part of this book of Christopher Columbus. Uh, he make a study on the, the, well, on well, the well, prophecy well, coming well, from the nation and gathering back to are, Israel. Are, are you suggesting here, I just want to make sure that it's clear to all, are you suggesting that Christopher Columbus was uh, actually a uh, part of the Anusim? No, he was himself for sure absolutely Anusim Mararum so Spain. What, what that means, it's important, what's the religion and the belief of the Columbus and the all Anusim? They believe in the Bible that in the last day, God, according to the prophet Amos chapter 9, he will gather it one by one all these Jews. So Christopher Columbus make two missions. One, open the way for the Jews of Spain to get saved in Indies, but that will be America. A second one, preach the gospel, preach the prophecy, to the new population, the new nation, and tell them coming back to Jerusalem. So the destiny, prophetic destiny of Anusim is to bring back the remnant of the son of Jacob, mixed it, as I said before, among the Gentiles, a gathered in Israel, and this is messianic, messianic vision and mission that this may have. But just uh, let me say a few more things. We think he was just a man uh, of a great intelligence and courage, but it was much more of that. He was a man of prophecy. It was clear for him, and his religion was, according to the prophet, to be messianic. Columbus was one Anusim who was reading all the New Testament, as I said, a Christian, but we have just one Bible as we know. So there is many like him. As I, I can say another short let sure, me sure. this story about the Americas. Okay. Another great man was uh, uh, Amerigo Vespuccio. He gave okay. name to the New Indies. Uh -huh. and he was Marano from the Marano city of Livorno, at that time of full. And from that city, Livorno, came the mine flower the boat the chartered to the pilgrim father from England in the port of Amazing. Rotterdam, landing in the Massachusetts Bay. So what that means, in that time, the time when the pilgrim father uh, discovered America and landed in America to build a new nation, they were in cooperation, in solidarity with the Maranos of Italy and Maranos in Holland, because the major group of Maranos escaped from Spain and landed in the Mediterranean area, including Italy, in Holland, where the uh, pilgrim lived to uh, uh, leave Europe, and the third group, the major one, is in South America. Oh, oh, okay, so, so, so there so, is something about Anusim who concerns South and North America. So when we're talking Anusim, we're not just talking about uh, uh, Spain or Italy, but it's including South America, those who, who, have, uh, yeah. who have arrived. Here is 
the important question to ask is, so 1492, the expulsion, you know, the expulsion of the Jews taking care of Spain, they're leaving Spain and they're going to different regions and ultimately many of them forcibly converting. Convert, yes. Okay, and, and when we're saying that they are now, we're seeing an amazing awakening. I want to talk to you for a moment about prophecy. Yeah. Prophetically, there is an awakening that we're seeing in South America, even now here in Italy, that many, many, many are discovering or rediscovering the fact that they are truly have a, a Jewish, Jewish lineage. So, so somebody asked a question skeptically. How would one know all of a sudden, after four or five hundred years, <laughs> that they have Jewish lineage? How, can you explain this to, to yeah. us? It's very simple, very clear. There is a two way to become Jews. One is from the heart to the heaven, and one from the spiritual to the physical. So the first thing is because the name. For example, myself, my family Let's name. Let's take you. Yes. Uh, my family name is Malek. Definitely is a Jewish name from the Bible, like Melchizedek or Abimelech. Yes. So the lineage, the genealogy of my family prove just my name is a proof in itself. I by come the name. from there. Yeah, so let's say by genealogy and by blood I'm Jews. But there is something spiritual. Yes. Something spiritual is because uh, generally speaking, uh, Columbus or so Amerigo Vespucci or Isaac Bravanel or Baruch Espinoza, they was the true believers and followers on Yeshua. So the Anusim was the true Jews and the true followers of Yeshua. So the religion at that time and still today of Anusim is messianic, messianic uh, believing. But let me say something about the Americas. The major number of the people escaped from Spain, landed in South America, Colombia, Venezuela, a Amazing. lot in Brazil from there. But step by step, they emigrated in the century because of the persecution in the north, Mexico, Caribbean area. But in the last century, because the pressure of the Inquisition, for example, there was a tribunal of Inquisition in Rio de Janeiro, in Lima, Peru, especially in Mexico City, yes. they moved in north. So, Recently, we discovered there is many uh, dear brother, wonderful Del Sanchez. He make research. The Anusim from Mexico and from South America infiltrated the the states in America, like New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona, but, but, but you, Florida. You, so you, you, you realize what you're suggesting here is very. Um, it can change a lot of things. In essence, what you are suggesting here is that there is a large population yeah. that might not be halachically Jewish, yeah. but in essence, they are representing the remnant of Israel. And the reason this is important, because if the Messiah, Messiah in this last day is going to gather, gather them back, and there is an awakening now, we are truly in the last days. Yeah. This is a fulfillment yeah. of prophecy. Definitely. We are not only talking about Alaka, but we are need to talk about the Bible because the question who is Jews, according to the Bible, who have the father genealogy is Jews. But because of the history, the rabbis changed this. So now they say only in the mother lineage you can yeah. be Jews. But it's important that the Judaism, the uh, of the second temple, there was a rabbinic Judaism, a Pharisaic uh, Judaism, but there was also Judeo-Christian groups who were still considered. So today we can say definitely the Maranus descendant who are true Jews because the lineage and believe in Yeshua, they don't need to go back to the Judaism, they need to, they are not a secret Jews, they can stay true Jews and true followers of Yeshua. Um, I, 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 I want to encourage the brother in, in America, in the Messianic community, uh, in the church, to check about uh, the, the, the names of the family and to, to, to find the blessing of the Berit, the blessing of the covenant 
to be mm-hmm. part of Israel but to stay in the faith of Yeshua Amen. because they are the Amen. true believers. We, we have just a couple of minutes and, and I just want to recap for you. I, I had a chance to look at some of the rabbinic commentaries because the entire thing fascinated me. It started with Evan Ezra, Rabbi Abalbanel, Okay, just, just, just a few yes. names. And what I discovered is interesting, not only that somehow their Jewishness will be discovered in the time we call the Acharit Ayamim, the Acharit last day, Ayamim, the last but day. it's also said that, the, it's interesting, it says that God will take their shame yes. and he will lift up their shame in these last days and they here's the shocker in isaiah 66 it tells that they're all actually not just any ordinary jews they're actually going to be the kohanim and the kohanim and the levim so so when you take all of this together you are seeing a picture that that is difficult to imagine so tell us for a moment for what do you sense i want to give you the last moment here to tell us what do you sense in your spirit that is happening right now through prophetic eye because i was here in italy with you we did a conference and i sense like some people starting to get it they're starting to get that wait a second i'm really part of israel amen what does it really mean so, so, so I would like to hear from you spiritually. What do you see uh, the next step here? What do you sense in your spirit? Well, the uh, theological definition is there is very simple. There is one God and there is one people of Israel with that contradiction. So the main destiny of the Anusim as all Israel is coming, coming back in the land. So the final destiny of uh, uh, Anusim with that conversion, they need to belong Israel coming back and make Aliyah because the land of Israel, Eretz Israel, is a thirsty of his population. So according to the prophet of Adaya, we need to settle it in the desert uh, uh, for the glorification of the coming king. So uh, uh, it's not only about uh, identity, but it's about the uh, unity of uh, Israel. Ah. And the destiny of Israel for the glorification, as uh, say Isaiah, will be the banner for the people is coming back in the land. So we really pray for the Israeli government. And we really pray for the brothers, uh, uh, Jewish Orthodox. Uh, we won't be one with the same destiny at the f- uh, s- final, f- final. While not compromising exodus. Yeshua, of course without denying the Messiah. Amen. Uh, amen, amen. I tell you what I sense in the spirit. Not only it's not just an issue of aliyah to the Negev, but it's an issue of identity. identity. Wherever they are in the diaspora of coming back to the covenants amen. of Abraham and amen. Isaac amen. and amen. Jacob. So I, I will tell you here from Italy in conclusion that I believe, and Yohanan, I really believe, that's why we are here, I believe that what you're doing here and us supporting us, uh, uh, launching and working to launch a yeshiva in, in, in Italian yeah. and, and, and those things, is a fulfillment of yeah. prophecy of the last day. They are coming back home spiritually and we also know that they're going to come back home physically the same way. How God going to work out all the details, I don't exactly know, but I know that it's happened. Our commandment, our great commandment is to be lined up with God the Gentile that tell us to go and bring every Jew back back home, home, back home physically and spiritually. So if God is touching you with this, perhaps you want to check first of all about your lineage, but also at the same time, consider supporting this holy Work, you know. They, I said the final things. It says that the Anusim, Evan Ezra says the Anusim will be the one who lead us somehow magically to King Messiah. So I don't know how it all will be played out, but it's going to be played out. So stay yeah. tuned as we see prophecies fulfilled in front of our eyes. In my behalf, Yohanan, in Thank it's you. such a joy to have you uh, a part Thank of you. part of us. You are part of us. You are one of us. You know, and it's a joy. It's a joy to to be here and see the good. And only Yeshua can do it, by the way, to see us all coming together to be grafted into one Amen. faith, to one city on the top of the mountain. It is Jerusalem. God bless you and Litraut from here, from Italy. We will see you. Shalom.
Et thank you for the Torah et for the teaching. Shalom. Litrot.